in the expansion of Ahmadiyya in some 200 countries. They do not possess, they did not possess the resources that Allah the Almighty has endured us today. Despite this, they created a revolution and ranked amongst those fortunate ones about whom the Prophet Messiah said in the following pleasing words, it is proven from past practice that the companions of the prophets are those who are weak and poor people. Many big people are bereft of this fortune as all kinds of thoughts come in their hearts. They consider themselves to be free in such matters because of their ego and hidden arrogance, as well as their high opinion of themselves. They consider it below their dignity and decorum to sit where the poor, sincere, and dear ones of God gather. Hazur says, says, I see that there are hundreds of people who have entered our Jamaat and who barely have any clothes on them and hardly have a sheet or pajama. They have no property at all, but one is amazed and astonished at their endless sincerity love and fidelity as well as the high resolve that emanates from them from time to time or the effects of which can be seen from their faces they are so firm in their faith and so convinced about their belief and so loyal and sincere in their truth and steadfastness that were these wealthy and rich people who find pleasure in worldly pursuits to come to know of that bliss, they would be ready to give up everything for it. Today, there would be many amongst you who are the descendants of the companions of the Prophet Messiah There would be some who are the children of these companions who have just been described as having brought about a change within themselves <coughs> after accepting the Messiah of the Muhammad and whose favors are being enjoyed by their descendants. <clears throat> Therefore, instead of being immersed in worldly matter, uh, matters, in the improved conditions that exist in these Western countries, every Ahmadi should try to acquire high uh, positions in the domain of spiritual and moral progress so that the continuity of the of the process of bringing about a change through prayers that had been started by your elders does not come to halt we should continue to improve in good works. It is indeed a favor of God Almighty on you. Ahmad is living here. That besides granting you admittance to the servitude of the 
Messiah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He has also granted you prosperity. The promised Messiah alayhi salam has said that if materialistic people come to know of that bliss, they would give up all their wealth for it. How unfortunate it is that despite possessing both kinds of favors, some of us do not hold them in high regard. Following my African tour, I stated that it was after a lot of sacrifice that the majority of African Ahmadis had participated in the Jalsa. The participants from neighboring countries in the Jalsa of uh, Jalsas of Ghana and Nigeria had in reality nothing. Neither money for the fairs nor clothes. Despite the heat, they spent the three days of Jalsa in the same clothes. On the one hand, one is surprised to observe that they are trying to improve in sincerity, fidelity, and spirituality. And on the other hand, one is filled with pride and, uh, and ad admiration. <coughs> These are the people who are scaling to new heights. These are the people who have derived benefit from the Jalsa. Therefore, if you have come here in view of the importance of the Jubilee Jalsa, then resolve and make a pledge, calling Allah the Almighty to witness, to make whatever favors you have acquired by participating in the Jalsa, a part and parcel of your life. God alone knows the unseen. I know not, nor can I know. What grace has been found by men, women, old and young from this Jalsa. But I hope and pray that all participants will have tried their best to achieve the expectations of the promised Messiah Islam under this spiritual environment. No man, no man is free from weaknesses and shortcomings and sometimes falls into the trap of Satan. That is why a constant and consistent effort is required. The Jalsa is a means of furthering this endeavor. The addresses made by the speakers and my own speech and sermon are no more than an, if, than an effort to remind about spiritual and moral values and to raise their standard. The speaker's, <coughs> speaker's words, or for that matter, my own words, cannot influence the hearts of the people unless everyone personally seeks help from Allah and prepares his heart for it. Even prophets cannot do this, uh, do this work. As Muslim Muhammad says, I know well that it is not possible for me to put these matters into someone's heart, nor do I have any instrument through which I can insert my words into anyone's heart. This is not unique to me. This is what had happened with all prophets. Inna ka la tahdi.